Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hey, they're from Fayetteville, North Carolina, for those of you who don't know, in some roundabout way. World gospel preachers. Praise the Lord. So glad to see y'all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's so, so many. You, you feel like testifying tonight? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> you want to right now? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is worth it, I'm telling you. The testimonies of the Lord are sure. You're walking pretty good there, sister. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> but we didn't doubt it, did we? No. Oh, you got to, th this, mm. this is a good story for those of you who don't know. Oh, I missed you here. <laughs> well, Brian, you, you want that guy up here? Yeah. <laughs> well, my, I'll give you the short, very short, very condensed version. Um, my husband and I, Brian, and we're in the Dominican Republic with our pastors, uh, Pastor Emery Goodman and Sister Vicki, and uh, Brian had just retired from the military, and just about five days after his official retirement, we were headed for coffee with Pastor Emery, and we're going down the road now are you in, you're in, yeah. in the Dominican Republic at this point. And we were minding our own business, staying on our own side of the road, you know, doing what we're supposed to be doing. And this big water truck was coming directly at us, and uh, he had lost control and hit his head on. And so... Uh, I won't go into you know, all the details and everything, but we found ourselves lying on the, the pavement there in the Dominican Republic after they pulled us out of the car, the SUV. And uh, so we were taken to the hospital there, found out that Brian had broken a couple ribs and lacerated his lung. And uh, you got more action there than you did on the, on the field, didn't you? You got more hurt. <laughs> And, uh, and I had uh, broken my back, and uh, also when they, they didn't know this right away, but then as, they, as I was in ICU over there in the DR, which that's a whole trip in, unto itself, <laughs> but I was laying up there in ICU, and uh, my, I guess my abdomen kept swelling, and so they didn't know why, so they did exploratory surgery, and they realized the doctor told me, or told my husband later, he said, you know, your wife was about a half hour from bleeding out. And, uh, but, but for God, right? <laughs> Glory to God. I'm standing here just as fit as a fiddle today. <laughs> I feel like I'm in North Carolina saying that, huh? How long, and when did that happen? That was just how long ago? This was, the accident happened November 5th. November so, 5th. not that long ago. There was. And so then when they opened me up um, for the emergency surgery there in the DR, uh, the surgeon told my husband later and my family, he's because our two precious daughters made the trip down there, praise God. And when he opened me up and he, he had found um, my spleen was crushed. And so he's like, well, I've got to remove that. And that's what was causing the internal bleeding. And then, uh, but when he removed the spleen, he found another one right behind it. I had two. <laughs> now, that doesn't normally happen. He told my husband, he goes, I've been a surgeon for over, I think, 20 years. He said, I have never seen anything like that. And he, he proclaimed it a miracle. And so, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And, my, and then, also, I had a liver contusion that they had to suture up. And, again, that's another one of the organs that regenerates. So, you know, no loss there. Praise God. And, uh, but then... I, I was there in ICU for quite a while, and then about two weeks later, we flew back to North Carolina, and praise God, they had a spot for me in Duke, which was another miracle, because they weren't accepting any new patients. And uh, so I had a broken back, and so I had to go in to have spinal fusion surgery, And uh, but I tell you what, I have no pain, no pain today, and that's a miracle of God, because... I, no, I could not walk uh, until they, after they did the surgery, I, because there was a great risk of it 
my spinal cord being compromised if I were to walk. So, Dr. Beth, is she telling the truth? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and Pastor Emery, his right leg was broken in like five places, and uh, but today he's getting better every single day. Amen. Amen. He's doing great. And we are just, I, I told the Lord, you know, every chance I have an opportunity to testify about his glory and what he's done, because, you know, that wasn't even anything that I could apply my faith towards because I didn't know I needed another spleen. And so, you know, it's, you know, a lot of times we stand on faith and believe for things, but that was just God's graciousness and his goodness flat out because I had no idea to even apply my faith in that direction. And he went ahead and did it just because he's good and he's God. Amen. <laughs> well, you, did you want to see? Praise the Lord. I guess I'm telling you. So. <laughs> it's good to worship God, right? And, Amen. And God is bigger than anything we have. And that's all we call on, have the word inside of us. Amen. If you have the word in you, it's yes. going to come out. And that's what happened while we were on the ground in Dominican Republic. We just started claiming the word, word inside of you, and it, it flows right out. Yeah. It's going to come out. So keep the word in you. Yep. Uh, be connected to the body of Christ. Bill. Keep the word of God in you. Amen. You know, along those same lines, I found myself in a spot where I couldn't even. Yeah. Well, first I said, do you want it? I took no. <laughs> but I, I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't take a, get a drink by myself. My daughters were there. The nurses were helping with every single thing. I couldn't even hold my phone to read my Bible. And that's when I was like, I was pulling up every scripture that I had stored in my heart. And I was thinking, man, you know, for such a time as this, I'm yes. so thankful that I was able to, because yes. I felt like I needed it. You know, yes. I knew I needed that word yes. to come out of my mouth with that dire circumstance we were in. I'm just Amen. so thankful and so grateful today Amen. for everything God's been doing and continues to do. Praise God. Just lift your hands and thank him for that. You know, thank lift your hands work. and lift your voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands thank and you, lift Lord your voice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You redeemed our souls from destruction. Oh, oh Lord. So I'm telling you the breakthrough of today is all about the breakthrough of tomorrow. Hallelujah. Not just about what's happening today. I you found wanna, that I wanna, out. I want to ask you something. There's anybody in here, maybe not, but right now says, I want them to lay hands on me right now and agree with me for a miracle. Would you come right now? If that's you, if there's anybody in here right now, come up here right now. Okay, come up. Come up. Get down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They know how to use their faith, man. They know the word. They know the, and I know when you when you come together with people who know the word, there's a there's a, woo, there's a electricity there in the spirit. Minister any way you want to minister to him if you want to know what's going on. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You guys pray. You pray. You pray. You stretch forth your hand, or you pray in the Holy Ghost. You put your faith with ours out there. Kids, pray, pray, put your hand out there. I want you guys to read this. This is the church. This is the church. Anything my God can do.
yes, 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 yes. Anything, yes, yes, yes. Anything, yes. My God can do. Yes. Sometimes was it was it him? No, Anybody remember? I was Amy Sybil McPherson. I, 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 no, no, I don't think she was that far back. Oh, Betty Baxter, she so. was, um, she lived somewhere I think around in this area, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and she was born crippled and uh, she was deformed and, and um, she always she was like this all the time and never had any uh, you know shoes or never had hardly anything. She was just crippled and. And uh, her mother would take her to church every Sunday, and she'd pray for her, and she'd read her the scriptures, and she'd say, now, anything's possible. You know, anything's possible with God. Oh, I love good parents that say that, you know. See, that just opens the door. And if you don't have a good parent that says that, then you hang around with other parents here they at the do. church. Yes. That's what the body's all about. You, you run into a lot of mothers and brothers and cousins, and I mean, you know, we just... Oh, I love it. And so, uh, but she'd just tell her anything's possible. Anything's possible. And so one day she was, uh, I remember she was, she was, I, I, I haven't heard the story in so long. I, I want to, I just, I can't, uh, I want to make sure I'm as accurate as I can remember. But I used to listen to it over and over and over before I'd get to a church. Because <laughs> if I was going to pray for the sick, I wanted to hear the Betty Baxter story. 
Oh, and it really fed my faith. Oh, wow. And so, um, so one day the Lord spoke to her and he said, you know, today's the day you're going to get healed. Receive. And He's, today's the day to receive. Today's the day, you know, that you receive that, that, that healing that you've been talking about. So she asked her mother, she said, Mother, she said, get me a, get me a dress and get me a brand new pair of shoes. Yeah. And she said, and just sit me in, in the living room in my chair. Sit me in the living room. Jesus is going to visit me today. And you know what? Just make yourself. He did. <laughs> the wind of God came oh, in that place no, no. and hit her body, just oh, sitting in that God. chair all by herself. But she wasn't by herself. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I know you love stuff like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, so that any believer, I mean, any believer, just makes you, just, you just get excited. You just go, I love these stories. I love these stories. Boy, I, I just feed off of them. I just think anything's possible. I love it when someone says, you know, I was an adulterer, but I'm not anymore. I love it when somebody says, you know, I was on meth, but I'm not anymore. Oh. Someone says, you know, I was in homosexuality, but I'm not anymore. Yeah. Or I, used to, I, mean, I just Woo! love all these things that people say, Aren't you know. You well, you know, I just used to be really noncommittal, and I didn't really much care. I was caught up in the world and the things and made sure my kids got to their soccer games before I did church, but I'm not anymore. Well, the Word of God says. I used to be a gossiper, but I'm not anymore. It I says, used to be prejudiced, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> I mean, you can just go on down the line. Well, that's what he says in 1 oh, Corinthians. So he went, she went there, and the wind of God blew there. She sat up straight. Her mother put her dress. She walked in there and put her new dress on and her new shoes. And she said, Mama, I'm going to church. Yeah. And she walked in the back of that church. Don't you know they had a revival? Hey. Hallelujah. There wasn't oh, anybody glory. walking in that, you know, watch her walking in going, Well, hi, honey. No, I don't come to church. Well, hi, honey. I come to church thinking, man, you know, I've got, oh, I've got to hear something. There's something I got to, there's something I got to do. I'm living by faith, man. I got to, I got to connect with God. There, like I've always said, there ain't nothing casual about a Holy Ghost thing. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Praise God. God. This is what he said. Doesn't that, doesn't that just oh, do she... something to you? It was because we'd be up in the mountains. I remember now. We'd be driving the mountains and uh, coming to Tennessee. What, what was that? Tell you? What's that place? Barry Burns and his wife. Johnson, you know, Johnson City. John, yeah, we'd be in the mountains and I'd be driving and Lois and Ray would be sleeping or something and I'd just be listening to Betty Baxter and I'd be going, Kurasoma da ka, Yeresina, Oh da ka. Do it again, God. Yeah. Do it again, Amen. God. Amen. So then one meeting, I mean, I was driving in there, I'm so excited, and I'm praying for people, and then I tell people, and then I'm praying for people, and then all of a sudden this happened to me, and I listen, I was a, I was a Southern Baptist Jew, okay? Pentecostal. Back, backslidden rock and roll drug addict. Formerly out. backslidden, okay. not at that moment no, And I had time. just, you know, really dedicated my life. So, you know, I didn't learn enough really, to know that it's things Jewish, weren't possible. Southern anyway, Baptist. So, um, Formerly backslidden Pentecostal. Now Pentecostal. And so then, okay, so, and so I'm just praying for people and minding my own business, as, as so that guy used to always say all the time, the guy who always cast out devils. Um, uh, what was his Hayes. name? Huh? Norval Hayes. Norval Hayes, just minding my own business. And then all of a sudden I was praying for people, and then all of a sudden I went out. I, I, you guys, I hardly share this because you got to be so careful when you share things like this because people will go, whoa. But, you know, it, there, there is another realm. I want kids, there is another realm bigger than your iPhone. You understand what I'm saying? Bigger than your play whatever station. Do you do PlayStation anymore? Do people do that? PlayStation 4. Okay, I think I, I have that old one you put on your TV and you go. Anyway, there is another world. You understand? Bigger than, bigger than just your little finite head. And so there I was. The walking. assets in the unseen so, are far greater than your assets in the scene. So what happened? I don't I, really care how much you got in the scene. You got more in the unseen. Ooh. That's why we look at things that are not seen. We govern our lives by unseen realities. Unseen, but not unreal. I can tell by Ooh. talking to you if you govern yourself by the unseen or the seen. But now, if you do govern yourself by the unseen, we can help you. No, if you govern yourself by the seen. No, yeah, if that's, you do, yeah, we can help you. You, you got hope. What, 
Because all things are possible. That's what the resurrection was about. Hope, hope, hope. And so there were my minister, and all of a sudden, I walk over, and my, I walk out. My spirit walks out. Now, you guys, I never heard, you know, anything like that before. I was a Southern Baptist Jew, you understand? And we skip Acts, 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 you know, sometimes. Acts two, two, Acts 2. What about Acts 2? Well, we don't know. Oh, but my southern, but my Jewish mother was smart enough to take me to all these meetings where there were, you know, uh, Maud, Amy, and uh, what's her husband's Lombard, name? Lombard. Rex Lombard. You know, she'd take me to their meetings, and I'd just be like, this is great. I loved it. But I walked out, and I turned back, and I saw me laying hands on people. Whew. And uh, I never happened to me before. And I looked at myself, and I went, oh, God, this world is more real than... This world is more real than anything we've ever touched. What world? The unseen world. The unseen, world. there you go. Glass is the teacher, okay? Everything's got to be. What? Well, I just don't want you to be confused. Is it in the Word? Is it, you know, is it, what, what are you talking about? And I'm like, come on, just get it. <laughs> well, I, I don't care how they got out of the wheelchair. Just get out. I care how they got out because I want the next one to get out. They will get out. <laughs> it all and works together. And when I went back, when I went back and I slipped back in to, you know, where, where I was conscious of my body, then the next thing I knew, everybody was on their face praying. Everybody was on the floor praying. Whew. Something took place between there and there that fell on the entire congregation. Now listen to me. You can go a lot further with a con with a con what's it called a congregation, congregation that is all in than you can with people who just came to sit and stare. Remember, Jesus couldn't do very much in that one place. You know, we're not here so you can say, "Well, I just like to see what you can do." Yeah. If you came for that, you're going to be really disappointed. But if you came to worship God and you're just, oh, God, and something is said that really rings your bell and you go, glory to God. And you don't care who, what Sister Doodad says next to you. You could give a rip. I was like I was walking down the aisle and, and this man, this, uh, this uh, uh, I think it's a Church of God preacher or something, he says, uh, well, glory to God. Like that, real loud. And when he said it, I jumped, and the glory fell right there. And I said, anybody who can get to this place right now, the glory's here. <laughs> well, the whole room runs there. And they're in the, it was, it was a big mob. And they were in the back, you know, and people were in the back. And the, the ushers looked at me and said, because they were stuck. They got to this place, and nobody could move, really. They were swaying like this. They were trying to get out, you know. And, and, no, they and, weren't really trying to get out. They were just there. They were just stuck. They were stuck. They didn't know what to do. And he, they looked, the ushers turned, looked at me and said, what do we do? And I said, I've never seen this before. You just said, I don't know, I think. I don't know. <laughs> do your best. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going. <laughs> we didn't know this, but there was a young uh, uh, a let me woman. Tell, let me tell the story. I'm so they you. just, listen, they start, they start just pulling them through like a cork out of a, no, I wouldn't know about a champagne bottle, would I? Okay. All right. Out of a cork. I've seen it on TV. And so, oh, I don't watch those shows, man. I'm getting, I'm getting deeper and deeper. Anyway, so they, they, pull, they start pulling them out. And so this one girl, she comes out. I'm not kidding. It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. I mean, you know, you don't have to just, you know, think about the old days. The old days are happening if you believe it. Amen. Uh, so this girl, she comes out, this lady, she comes out. And she's praying and speaking in other tongues. And, and she, that's where we get the word, word plastered from. No. And she got up against the wall, and for 45 minutes Ooh. after the service was dismissed, she was up against the wall praying in other tongues. Now, we didn't know this, but a friend of ours listen, but listen, told listen, us. Listen, let me get this clear. The whole church was in it. Yeah, that's right. Is everybody in it tonight? Yeah. You want to see someone healed of cancer? Hallelujah. You want to see someone who's been battered and abused that you don't know anything about, and they leave this place, and it's like it's a whole new world. Every chain is That's broken. the reason we're doing this. It's O-T-H-E-R-S. Others. She had come with our friend, and they were sitting on the back row, and when the power of God came on her, she had been having a conversation with her friend for, I think, they, if I remember correctly, for about two years about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. 
And she said, it's not for me. I'm glad you, you are, but it's just not something I can receive. And, and there was something said in the service, something of scripture that was said. And when it's she was, said it, I didn't. And when I said it, it was the same scripture that had been given to her that night, right before. So it kind of would, you know, the, the, the way the spirit of God moves is he'll just take something that to someone else would mean nothing. But when it's said to you, it automatically just starts a, 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 a way of him opening something up that was closed well the power of God came on her when I said that scripture and then when that uh, um, pastor shouted and it just brought the presence of God just just came on the scene she got up kind of crawled over and went into where that glory was and she was the one had, that came out on the other side speaking in other tongues and for 45 minutes after the service she was the last one to leave the one who had said it's not for me I can't receive but you understand all things are possible yes and uh, I, I'm just here but to listen, tell you that was the whole church the one one man said of there one man went glory to God and they all just Brother said, Hagen yeah. used to call that lightnings <laughs> you know ask you the Lord rain on the time of the latter rain and he'll send bright clouds the word bright means lightnings he used to call that lightnings when something would hit and everybody just be blah glory Hallelujah. Glory. Somebody else say it. Give me, give me one. Give me two. Give me three. Glory. Give me four. Hallelujah. Glory, Lord. Lord. Do it here. Do it here. Right Glory. here, Lord. Right here. Oh, glory oh, to God. Do it again. Yeah. Do it again. Woo, I'm telling do you. Do it again. Oh, the blood of do Jesus testifies. Do it again. All things are possible because he's alive. I love to tell the old story How God set me free yes. I'm living with his life today Because of Calvary hey. They crucified my Jesus And hung him on a cross The devil laughed and had a big time But God showed who was boss It's by the blood That he shed for me the law of life in Christ Jesus But it set me free Yes it did Moses came to the water When they were trying to flee He turned and saw Pharaoh But God parted the sea David heard Goliath That's what the devil does Shout and fear to all the crowd But listen David said In the name of the your head is coming down It's by the blood That you shed for me The law of life in Christ Jesus When it set me free oh, What happened? It's by the blood The precious blood That you shed for me The law of life in Christ Jesus Came to me It set me free Drinking from the new wine, filled with blood from above. The devil said, I just can't hold those Christians. They're walking in too much love. When the devil says it's over, say, I'm not one of it. But my God is the God who's more than enough. It ain't over yet. You're still breathing. You're still breathing. It ain't over yet. But it set me free Oh, it's by the blood It's by the blood That was shed for me The law of life in Christ Jesus But it set me free Oh, yeah The law of gravity says What goes up must come down But the law of life in Christ says What goes down devil tries to scare you. Listen here, listen. Just cause things don't look fine. That's when you say in faith, like Caleb said. This mountain is mine. The foot tides of glory are open. His coming won't be long. You gotta win the lost, heal the sick. You will be destroyed. It's by the blood. 
Jesus said, I got my healing. I got my healing. I 
do you do that? Because I want you to make an exclamation mark. Never yeah. underestimate the value of praise. Whatever Never that was. underestimate Hallelujah. the value oh. of praise. You gotta. You can be praising God about something here there's, and something move way over there. There's got to be something that moves you. And whatever, I've heard Lord say this over and over, whatever moves you, controls you. Yeah. There's something about moving. Like there's something about, I don't like running around the church. I just don't. But I do not want it to control, to control me. You understand? I don't want an attitude to control me if it's not godly. I don't want, I don't want something to control me besides what the Holy Ghost says. And I've run around the church where Usher had to take out his hearing aids because I ran around the church and ran past him. And when I did, it went, Shh. his ears went. Shh. So you see, it's not about you, but it could be about you because you, so I've known a lady, one lady's running around the church. She couldn't even hardly run and her legs were swollen. It was bad. It was really bad. In fact, when I saw her running, I thought, oh, Jesus, we need a miracle. I don't want her falling down, you know. She runs back around the front. She starts rejoicing and shouting and jumping up and down and said, it's gone. It's gone. You understand, we come to church or we, or we walk out to the stores or everywhere we go. It's about others. It's about doing something for others. Well, I don't want to talk to somebody about Jesus. Selfish. You're keeping it to yourself, this thing, but keeping it to yourself, the thing that's greater than anything in the whole wide world, and we keep it to ourselves? That is so selfish. Be led of the Lord. I've heard people say that, I've heard, and I've heard pastors preach it. You know, be led of the Lord, and, you know, be led of the Lord. But some people have never, ever felt any led. Pastor B.B. Hankins used to go put it in their, put it in their hand when he, they said, well, I just don't feel led. And he'd, he'd, he carried a big BB, and he'd, he'd put it in his, he said, do you feel that? A lead BB. Well, I just don't. I just don't. You can sit down. I just I think, don't feel. I don't you know, feel the Holy Ghost. Well, He landed on him. You feel that? <laughs> In the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, about. He was just wow. Said He sat on him. You feel that? I feel it. Yeah, you feel it. <laughs> Whoa! Something will move you. And listen to me, kids. You do not listen to me carefully. You do not want to get hooked up with someone who doesn't. It's not more in love with Jesus than they are you. Yeah. And some of the adults are saying, oh, amen. Some of you can't say it because you're sitting next to them. But let me just oh, tell you. stop. You don't know that. But you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, people can change. But, I, you know, my mother told me, she said, you know, people can change. But she said, sometimes they don't. Well, let's just put it this way. It's not because it's not possible with God. No. But if you don't, if you're not willing, boom, you'll be in the same mess people you were the next time. People can change. But the longer you live without it, the harder it will be. Another thing, kids. Because you get, God doesn't change the way he feels about you, but you do change the way you feel about him. <laughs> Another thing. If they don't give to the Lord, they ain't giving to you. Oh, I know. <laughs> Isn't this good? Let's stop. <laughs> I mean it. Watch oh, how Lord. they give. If they're stingy. You know, they're stingy and selfish and everything's just, you know, well, here's 50 cents. And if that's all you got, that's great. But if, you know, but if you've got 50 in your pocket and you're spending 50 cents for a drink for your date, pff, forget it. I remember I was dating this guy and his pastor's wife. They were a very big church and very successful church. But I think successful means big or small. Anyway, she said, uh, in other words, Wait a minute. You were dating, well, not a pastor's wife. You no. Were, uh, okay. I was dating someone and this pastor's wife. And a pastor's wife. Yes. Yeah, okay. Just thought I'd make that clear. You know, oh, they are live streaming. So, <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. And so, um, <laughs> and so the pastor's wife asked me, I was, you know, we were traveling and touring. And, and I, you know, she said, are you dating someone? I said, yeah. And she said, well, what have they given you? I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I said, well. She said, ditch them. She said, you're better off alone. Believe in God for everything you need. Wow, is right. But you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm saying a whole lot tonight. 
I'm saying a whole lot. It's your heart. It's your heart. You love him so much. You don't give a rip what anybody thinks about you. You want to serve him. Even if you serve him and you're right in the middle of sin, you can get out and come back if he sees your heart is right. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, Los, I know you got something you want to share. We got to get out of here at 11 o'clock, so it's... <laughs> 12, 12, 12. Well, okay, well, praise the Lord. I'm the only person that I know that preaches in English in America that has to have an interpreter. Isn't that right, Lisa? Isn't that right? She interprets everything I say. Praise the Lord. I didn't say a word. Oh, my goodness. But I'm glad she's on my side. Praise the Lord. You know, you're like that preacher who after the service, somebody came up to him and said, Oh, pastor. That was so good. And he said, well, it was just all God. And the guy looked at him and said, well, it wasn't that good. <laughs> it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Oh, you're laughing because oh, you know, right? <laughs> you know it's true. Yeah, it was good, it but it wasn't that good. Praise People the Lord. People say it was great, and you're like, oh. Praise the Lord. It wasn't all God, but it was still good. Thank you, Lord. That's what I'm trying to say. Praise the Lord. But uh, tonight, you know, there's just a real, I, I just believe there is a, a working of the Spirit for today. But it's really more than just about today. It's about tomorrow. And I believe God's called us together for such a time as this. It's a momentous occasion. People are trying to determine which way to go today and how to go and, and, and let the will of God be done. And, you know, there are patterns in the Bible. You don't, you don't have to look for a pattern to follow. All you need to do is discover the one. The Bible calls it an ancient path. You know, it's a, it's a path that's well-worn. In other words, you're not the first person to live out the will of God during troubled times. But I'm here to tell you, you have a witness of men and women of faith. In fact, really, uh, uh, someone, a Bible scholar, was saying that, really, if the church is ever to be built, it will be built in troublesome times. And it's interesting to me in the book of Acts, I mean, you know, you can, you can read all about all the trouble they had, but at the same time, that was the, 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 the move of God that ushered in uh, uh, the, the day that we're living in. I mean, signs, wonders, and miracles being done in the name of Jesus Christ. The blind seeing, the, the lame who'd never uh, walked before walking, people being raised from the dead through men and women who believe Jesus not only lived, but he's alive. But I mean, if you want to, you can look through the book of Acts and you can read about them being thrown in prison. You can read about them being stoned. You can read about them, you know, being um, uh, murdered because they were trusting God. Uh, you can read all about troublesome times being thrown before the, the, the powers of the, the day and just being humiliated. But at the same time, when, you know, some people who maybe aren't caught up in the work of God and they're thinking, oh, look at all the difficulties, look at all the trouble. But if you go to one of their prayer meetings, the Bible talks about how that they lifted their voice up to God in one accord. Oh God, thou art Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Stretch forth your hand. Signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. Boldness will speak your word. They don't sound like wimps to me. They weren't crying over the difficulty. They were lifting their voice together and trusting in the one who could deliver and cause not just a breakthrough for them, but a breakthrough for you so you know I can tell you we got revivals going on right now you're waiting for everything to happen I'm telling you it's happening it's just what you're hooked up with I'm telling you right in the midst of great difficulty. All over the world. It's like I was telling pastor on the way to church, Daniel, here he was. I mean, they've been carried away captive. He was in a place he didn't want to be. He was where he'd never, it wasn't his choosing to be there, but he was there. It wasn't like he wanted it to be, but he kept his faith in God. Even when he was in a place he didn't want to be, at a time he wasn't wanting to be there, and God moved in that place and brought about a reformation that speaks, not just spoke to that day, but still speaks to us today. Yeah. He got a bunch of friends who weren't afraid of the fire. Get some friends who aren't afraid of the Woo! fire. 
In you fact, get some friends who want to start up a little. Oh. I got some friends who aren't afraid of the fire. Praise the Lord. I'm saying all this to you to say the move of God is on, brothers and sisters. I mean, it's on. And it's all about who, you know, what are you going to hook up with? And I don't know about you, but I'm hooking up with those who are believing for signs, wonders, and miracles to be done. I'm here for the supernatural. I'm not trusting in getting something done through political power, through the power of man or the intellect. Uh, I'm, I'm trusting in one thing, the very same power that raised Christ from the dead. That power that caused every knee to bow, every Every tongue to confess that power that bears witness in earth, heaven, earth, and under the earth for all eternity. Eternal redemption never will be taken away because Jesus secured it. And I just put my faith in what he's done. Some of y'all just need to walk out and let the Holy Ghost work. You're trying to say, I can't walk out to that because I don't know how it will happen. You don't have to know how it will happen. All you need to do is open the door to the supernatural. You say, well, how do I do that? Romans 10 tells us that door is closer than you think. It's as close as your heart and your mouth. He said the word of faith is near you, even in your heart and in your mouth. And if you'll open the door in those areas, just open the door. I don't know what you're saying about them, but if you'll give God a chance to work and begin to say what he says, you'll open the door to a work from heaven that you cannot explain I'll guarantee you it's not because of me guarantee I know what God says and he's the same yesterday today and forever and so tonight and tomorrow night too we're going to have some real good uh, moves of God not just you say oh I just want to see you know somebody run or shout yeah you probably see that but see you got your eyes on the scene what you don't realize is what's happening in the unseen. You try to explain the things of the Spirit with just natural vocabulary or understanding, you're going to miss the real meaning of what's happening. You really don't discern it until you have lived it out by faith. Oh, and it's so good, I'm telling you. Doesn't mean you don't have trouble, but I'm here to tell you, you got more triumph than you have trouble. It's like our well, uh, Bob Yandian years ago, uh, we were at church there. He was our pastor at that time. And he said, you know, he said there's just this one particular person. He might probably was a board member. And he said, oh, he said, you know, I don't know that. But, you know, anyway, he said, I just don't understand it, Pastor Bob. I don't understand it. It's just like, you know, we, get vic we have victory and then there's more trouble. And we have victory. And then there's more trouble. And then we have the victory, and there's just more trouble. He said, I don't understand it. It just seems like we have trouble after trouble after trouble. And Pastor Bob looked at him, and you, this is the reason he's the pastor and not the guy he's talking to. He said, what? You know, it doesn't seem that way to me at all. He said, we may have trouble, but then we have victory. We might have some more trouble, but then we have victory. We might have more trouble, but we still got victory. He said, to me, it's like victory after victory after victory. Woo! Hallelujah! Come on! Open the door! I'm telling you, there's victory after victory. You got Pretty good for a white Indian. So... Tonight, I thought she was a Comanche, but she's a so, Turk. I'm going to put that over here. And so, tonight I want to I wanna read from uh, the Word of God a story to help you to understand the difficulties of life and to understand them from a perspective that helps you to see things from God's view. The unseen, not the unreal, the unseen. Your assets are much greater in the unseen. Woo, you have been given, the Bible says, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Oh, I'm telling you, you, got, you just don't know what kind of account balance you have. Because Jesus died and rose from the dead. Woo, glory. But so I was uh, 
Uh, you know, I, I was just thinking about some things concerning, you know, the difficulties and troubles and, and you know, you know, pursuing the things that, that you know that God's, God's will for your life and, and dealing with the difficulties along the way. Anybody ever had difficulties pursuing the will of God? <laughs> well, if you hadn't, you had never done the will of God. Because I'm here to tell you, you do have an enemy and he is not. If you never run into him, you might want to check which direction you're going. <laughs> oh, glory to God. And so I was reading this scripture. It's kind of, uh, uh, I mean, I, you know, the move of the Spirit of God is so strong and so unexplainable. But a word from God will help you ride in that area that the Spirit of God is taking you. I mean, it'll just, you can just hold steady. And doesn't mean that all you got is what you know. You got much more than that. But you can stand your ground. And so 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 says this. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. And as he's talking to them, I love this because he says stuff to them. Uh, uh, like uh, I was reading some of these scriptures today. And he talks to them in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians. And he says to them stuff like... Um, uh, our gospel came to you not only in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Woo, so he's talking to a church that's having some difficulties. But they got joy in the Holy Ghost. You want to know why? Because they're shouting the victory. They got some trouble, but they got victory. Victory after victory after victory. And so here he is talking to this church, and he says, For our gospel came not to you in word only, but in power, in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. And then he talks about how from them sounded out the word of the Lord into every place. In other words, I like to tell people it wasn't just a message they heard. They didn't just hear a message. They were the message. See, the only part of the Bible that you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, shouting over 30 years from now is the part you're living today. And when tomorrow comes, you're living it tomorrow. I'm telling you, you would say, what's the key to shouting 30 years from now? Shout today. Shout tomorrow. Shout the next day. What if it's a, de a day of trouble? Just get some joy in the Holy Ghost right in the middle of it. I mean, there's something about praising God that the devil hopes you never tap into. Praise, the Bible says in Psalms, stops the work of the enemy. Woo, that ain't his song, brother. He is not going to join you in a chorus of victory in Jesus. You can, get, you can clear the room if you start singing that. And so he went on and he said... Uh, and you, well, that might be true too, but you know. But then he went over to him and he said, I love what he said to him and, uh, as he got over into the uh, second chapter. And he says, uh, uh, we thank God. Well, he says, we thank God without ceasing because you received the word of God which you heard of us. First Thessalonians 2.13. He said, as you received it, not as the word of man, but it is as it is in truth, the word of God which if." effectually works also in you that believe. He said, when you receive the word uh, 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 from us, you didn't receive it as a message that came from a, a, a normal uh, person. You received it as it is in truth, the word of the living God. And he said, it not only energizes us, but it energizes you. Now, he's talking to people who are having difficulties. And he says to them as he's, as he's getting on down here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then he says to them in verse 18. Wherefore I, Paul, uh, I would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. So Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica about Satan hindering the work of God. Anybody ever experienced that? 
Well, it's very interesting to read about it. Hindering, uh, I, I, different Bible scholars, I was looking up the word hindered and just kind of using it because sometimes you just hear a word and you just, you know, just kind of rolls off of you. But uh, the, the word hindered uh, is a word that describes a road so deteriorated and broken up that it is impassable. It is as a result, you have to turn around, go back, and find another route to get where you were going. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, I, 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 I had I, uh, to come to you more than once was my plan. It was the plan of God. But Satan caused the road to be so deteriorated, I had to get another plan. I had to go around another direction. It wasn't exactly what I thought I was going to have to do, but I still got the victory. Come on now. Now listen to me. You live long enough serving God. You will come to a place where something will happen that you didn't intend for it to happen. And maybe it will come all of a sudden like our friends Elisa and Brian were sharing. And maybe all of a sudden something begins. You, your, your plan was to do this. And all of a sudden something hindering work of the devil hits your life. Now what are you going to do? It's at that time. Now listen. It's at that time you need to remember tonight. It's not the only thing you need to remember, but I'm telling you, it is not anything new, and there is a way to build a road right over the rubble so that the will of God not only will be done, but it. I found out something about believing God is when you're in a place where you meet with a work of the devil in that very place, if you'll trust in God, that two-lane road turns into a four-lane road. Woo, he'll take what was meant to bury you and it'll carry you to another place. It will if you'll give God. Open the door to him. And so this is what he said. He said, Satan hindered us. Uh, he said, these are the tactics of the devil. I recognize he has elbowed me off of my course. I lost an edge I had. But he, listen, this is not the same. Uh, he, this is not the last thing that ever happens in, to Paul's life. He, his, his, he was beaten the head. He was stoned. He was left for dead. But he still is the one who wrote, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us some people have a hard time coming up with that message if they'd experience some of the difficulties Paul did so you experience difficulties now what are you going to do now I'm here to tell you the reason you have faith is because you need faith did you hear me the reason you need faith in God is because there is an enemy who will hinder and try to stop. You, and I said it last night, but I'll say it again tonight. Finishing the work of God is what every fight of faith in your life is about. And when you come up against a hindering work of the enemy, just remember, don't let that be your last day. Don't let that be the defining moment in your life. Don't let that be what you go to bed and think about. Don't let that be what you talk about. I'm telling you right now, it's not meant. The devil is never supposed to have the last word. Never. Jesus said, I am the first. I am the last. I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. So conversation has changed. And so, he's talking about the hindering work of God. And he's talking about getting, uh, uh, you know, just having some bumps along the road that cause things to be uh, 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 obstacles in his life. Well, so I was reading, I like to read other people's perspective of Bible truth that have lived out their faith in God. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But verse 7 says that we should follow those who have uh, taught us the word. And it says this, follow them considering their end. In other words, he said, watch how they live out their faith. 
And if you found someone who died with a shout of glory on their lips, you found someone, it doesn't mean they had no failures, but they got back up. And when they got back up, they built a road over the rubble of that life, that place in their life. And because they did, they finished the work of God. And so he says, consider those whose end, consider their end. And then he says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, he said, there are people who have lived for Jesus in every, in the past, in the present, and in the future. And there's something about living for Jesus that's the same no matter when you do it. It's the same life. It's the same victory. It's the same peace. It's the same redemption. And if you can, if you can see that, if you can see it, woo, he said it'll help you end up right. Follow them. Like they say, if you're walking through a minefield and you see footprints, step in them. And so I said all that to say, this was a sermon delivered on a Sunday morning in October 29th of 1865 by Charles Spurgeon. Now, I did not know this about Charles Spurgeon when I read this, uh, but I learned that as he was building this uh, metropolitan tabernacle uh, because the crowds to house the crowds that would come to hear him preach that as he was building it uh, this was about uh, I think this was about oh uh, seven or eight years before something like that I'm sorry I didn't have it have it uh, let's see there's 18 uh, where is it I got it here 1856 he had rented a hall so it was nine years before he had rented a hall and as he was renting this hall an over overflow crowd was there and there were some pranksters in the uh, uh, audience and they started shouting fire fire and the balcony was going to collapse well it caused panic in the whole congregation in the crowd and people went toward the exits and in in doing this seven people were trampled to death and dozens more were taken to the hospital badly injured and it's, Charles Spurgeon was in the, the uh, 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 he was in the pulpit at the time. He collapsed in horror. He had to be carried from the pulpit. And he said later, he fell into such deep depression that he doubted anyone had ever cl- uh, passed as close to uh, insanity as he had and come back. He said, he said, uh, you know, it was an overwhelming, uh, uh, just, just it hit him and it just almost destroyed him. Well, so this was in uh, 18, around 1856, I believe. And as he collapses in horror. But in 1861, the tabernacle opened. Uh, and, and in 1865, he preaches a message called Satan Hindered Us. Now, you wonder why some people like to preach the messages they like to preach. Well, I'm going to tell you. The messages that you just cannot keep, it's like a fire shut up in your bones, are the messages that have come alive in you because you've lived it. You didn't just hear it. You lived it. And it's not just something they did. It's something you did. You know, it's like they said in Acts 4 when they told him, would you just quit talking about Jesus? Peter and John said, we cannot quit talking about Jesus. We can't keep keep talking. We have to talk about the things that we have seen and heard. Woo! The generation that's never seen a move of God is the generation that will be lost. Every generation needs to see the move of God. You say, how does that happen? When people wearing your clothes get up and move when God's moving in you and speak what God is saying. Don't hold it back. You don't think it's enough? I'm here to tell you, did you know that two-thirds, two-thirds of people today, if you ask them what John 3.16 mean is, they can't tell you. Two-thirds. How many of y'all know what John 3.16 is? You know. You know more than two-thirds of your generation. If you ask them, one, uh, what is it, uh, uh, how many, I forget what it is, four out of ten, no, six out of ten, when you, they don't even know what the term gospel means. Have no idea. Anybody in here know what gospel means? The good news. I'm telling you, you know more than the majority of the people uh, uh, living today. They don't know. 
I'm here to tell you, you think what you've got isn't enough. I'm here to tell you, it's more than enough to start a fire that cannot be stopped. Hallelujah. And so here he is. Uh, and Charles Spurgeon, on 1865, now remember, just nine years earlier, he'd had this horrific incident happen. I believe that was the work of the devil. What do you think? I mean, pranksters yell fire, and seven people die, and dozens other are badly injured. Uh, how'd you like to recover and come to preach the next week after that? You better have something besides just an awareness of the difficulty. You better have something more than just, let me tell you, I've had some problems. Well, join the club and you are not first on the roll. But you got something else besides problems. You got a promise from God that makes your enemy tremble. And if you ever find out about it, he knows there's nothing he can do to stop you. He can hinder you, but he cannot stop you because he could not stop Jesus and Jesus is your Lord. And so the Bible says, oh, not the Bible, this sermon, sorry, uh, on Sunday morning, October 29th, 1865, he's preaching on Satan hindered us. Now, Charles Spurgeon was known as the Prince of Preachers. He was very colorful. In fact, he preached to 6,000 people every Sunday in this tabernacle without a microphone. I think you can do it. I think you better... I think you better be sure of what you're saying if you're going to talk like that. You know what I mean? And so here he is, and he's preaching from the uh, text as Satan hindered us. And he says this. Now listen, this is so good, I'm telling you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And people who lived out their faith got something that you need to know. And so he said, you would perhaps wonder why the devil should care so much about Paul and his whereabouts. Why should he take so much interest in keeping these three men from that particular church? Remember, Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonica. He said, this leads us to observe what wonderful importance is attached to the action of Christian ministers. Woo! Here is the master of all evil, the prince of the power of the air, intently watching the journeying of these three men, apparently far more concerned about their movements than about the doings of Nero or Tiberius. Nero and Tiberius were kings. You understand? If you were going to get something to happen, in the natural, you think, I got to go where someone can make it happen. They can change things. But he, apparently, the devil sees it a little differently. He was far more interested than these Christian ministers who were going to this church in Thessalonica, a small church. This was not a church that was a mega church. This was a small church. Some Bible scholars say around 100 or so. Small church, why would it matter what they're doing? Apparently, to the devil, the prince of your, and the enemy of your soul, the prince of darkness, what they were doing was far more important than what the kings of the land were doing. Woo! In other words, I'm here to tell you, what happens in the church house is far more important than what happens in the White House. I don't care who's in office. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the place and the position of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Woo! And so here he is talking about the activities of these men who are on a, really, a planned, a, a, a heavenly, they had a dream. You know why they were going there? Because the Bible says in Acts 16 that Paul, when he had tried to go somewhere else and tried to go somewhere else, he could not go. And, and so he goes to sleep. He has a dream. And when he has this dream, the, there, there's a man from Macedonia. Thessalonica is a city in Macedonia, for those of you who don't know. And he hears this man saying, come over here and help us. Hallelujah. You, there is a work of God to be done. 
It will not be done by men and women dependent on natural uh, 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 energy, natural uh, ability, but it will be done by men and women who have been clothed with the power that raised Christ from the dead. It will make you strong. It will cause you to rise when you fall. It will cause you to stand when all others uh, will move away. It will cause you to go into the place that others say it cannot be. But the power of God God is at work to change everything. Watch and see. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the truth. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I know your hand is on us. Oh, Lord, I thank you for speaking causing us to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Shackled by a heavy Jesus, there's just something a 
dedicated my life. I was in Nashville at the time. I'd left L.A. and turned down a tremendous deal there. And a uh, singing career. And There was a, a, a in the, the publishing house that I was signed with. Uh, she's now, she was now the CEO. Later she gets the biggest publishing company in the world. She was a Southern Baptist Sunday school teacher. <laughs> she kept asking me to come to church and one day I said yes. Then I started coming back and learning some things and it was a guy who drove a bus there and just went out and picked up little children in the neighborhoods that didn't have a way and he, he knew I was struggling and I was in the back of the, the church and he looked at me and he said, you know, Cindy, you're going to make it. And I even struggled after I was spirit filled. I mean, I struggled so much, but you know, I stayed with it. And I went to his funeral, and there was a there was a pin on his lapel, and it said, "Because he lives," and that pin still speaks today. Because you live, I can face tomorrow. I can take it because you. Oh 
something that I can speak to the teenagers. She had come from Egypt to, to camp to meeting, camp meeting. Uh, in Tulsa last year. And we had some friends from Egypt who introduced us and Cindy asked her to write something that we could read to the young people in America today. She said, as a Christian in Egypt, it's not legal to speak publicly or share your beliefs with others because you live. If you do, it's all your personal responsibility. You could expect it to be physically abused or beaten or get arrested or put into jail. In one incident, while I was waiting in a subway station, I got a word of knowledge for a Muslim woman standing beside me with back pain. I told her that Jesus wanted to heal her, but she didn't accept it. Instead, she screamed in the station, this girl wants to make me a Christian. And we have to reject my religion. Then she started to threaten her, threaten her by beating. I got delivered safely that day. But in spite of all that, there's a fire inside of this young generation sharing Jesus with people about them here. Many of this young generation are seeing visions and dreams. Some have divine visitations to heaven and hell. So they cannot keep silent while people around them are heading to eternal destruction. Prayers and intercessions go for the sake of those who are destined to the eternal life that they may come to the knowledge of Jesus. To the younger generation in the USA, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Or shall a nation be brought forth in a moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Isaiah 66, 8. She says to you, God is looking for someone to stand in the gap for his or her nation and ask for their nation. God gave us the authority. He gave us the key for our nations to go and possess our lands. So go and do it in boldness. It's your right. You, young generation are like arrows in the hand of the warrior. Let him use you to bear fruit for eternity. And the reason I weep is that the Western church has done a disservice to the teenagers and the churches by being so lackadaisical. Not everybody, but in a general, you understand. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the churches we go to. They're fired up. But it's just not about them. It's about the world. She said, not only that, her mother was beaten. Not only that, there was a yellow girl, 12-year-old girl leaving her church. And they shot her down. She's holding her Bible and she's skipping home from church. I said, oh God, have I done anything for you that warrants me to be shot down? devil. I like to, Lord. 
those kind of people that live with a smile on their face. Ooh, you say, don't they have trouble? Oh, they got something you can't get any other way. But declaring who Jesus is in your life. I'm telling you, the hand of God is on you to show the world Jesus is alive. I don't know what's happened, but I can guarantee you the devil's hoping you flee well, and shut leave her down the will of God. But we will not Just flee. go through the motions, but don't really have anything behind it. I want to ask you a question. If you're in here, I think everybody in here, but I don't know, and you're in here and Jesus is your Lord, you know him as your Lord and Savior. Would you lift your hand so I can see it? Not just me, but so that everyone in your generation can see it. I'm just looking. Anyone, everyone? Yeah, I like the two hands. Give it up. I'm all in. All right, put your hand down. You're here tonight and you say, I am born again. I am filled with the life of God. But I've never spoken in other tongues. The Bible says when they were filled with the Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues. And the Bible says they were clothed with the power of God. Really, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural experience. And it opens the door to all the supernatural manifestations of God. And, you know, in the last days, it's interesting to me that being filled with the Spirit uh, um, and speaking in other tongues, Ooh, tongues, yes. interpretation tongues, the only time we see that manifestation of the Spirit, Holy Spirit in the Bible is in the church age. In the church age. That's you and my, that's our day. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I'll take the extra bullet. Give it to me. Because what you face, it requires the gifts of the Spirit, the sure, power of God. Yes. And you've got what you need. If there's anyone in here tonight, you say, I have never spoken other tongues. Would you lift your hand so I could see it? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. You say, I've never spoken other tongues. Anyone else? Anyone at all? Anyone? Would you do us a favor? Would you come down here right now? And let's just pray and receive. I tell you what, don't do us a favor. Do yourself yeah, a favor. Yeah, do yourself Get a favor. Here, right? Do your world a favor. Come on. Do your Come friends on. a favor. Come on. Yeah, praise the do Lord. Do your spouse a favor. Praise the Lord. I believe, you know, there's a there's a, a an outpouring in the last Ushers, days. You can you see him right here. Ushers, in the last you? days when the Bible says he will pour out his spirit on they're, they're all flesh. Kind of, they're, they're kind Come of local jobs. Stand right here. Lot, Come here. That's right. I can help straighten. Come here. Okay. There you go. And you, in the last days, he said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Do you know every person on the day of Pentecost? Anybody else? Every person there. Wait, wait a minute, Lois. Let me say, is there somebody here and you are spirit-filled, but you're having problems like, you know, with your utterance? You, you, don't, you don't pray in tongues much. You haven't yeah. prayed in tongues in a while, maybe. Or, or maybe you have problems, you know, just doing it. Anybody like that in here? And just I have been filled, but I don't really, I haven't exercised. That's what I'm looking for. Anybody? Exercise. Anybody at all? You say, I, I, don't, I don't really speak in tongues much. I don't really, you know, at all. Is there anyone, everybody? Over here? Come on up. Come on down. Come on. Yeah, we're going to stir the things of God up in your life so that you can receive what God kind of has for you. Times. Come on. Come on. Anyone else? All right. You good? Good. You're good? So this is what, you know, I'm just going to tell you what happened to me. Because, see, that's what you talk about. What happened to you? I was, when, when I, I got born again when I was nine years old, when I was 18, I heard about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and I, I thought, well, I've never seen this before, so I began to look through the Word of God and see that every time they were filled with the Spirit, they either spoke with other tongues, or it is inferred they spoke in other tongues, and the Bible says that when you pray or speak in other tongues, I read all the scriptures, I won't go through them all tonight, we'll be here for another hour, but I read them all, well, one day, after I read them all, I I was thinking I was driving in my car and I was thinking about those scriptures and I started to think about 1 Corinthians 14 and he says in 1 Corinthians 14 when you speak in an unknown tongue your spirit prays you're speaking to God and he says how be it in the spirit you're uttering mysteries not mysteries to God but things you don't know and he says the utterance or the sound it's not coming from your intellect, what you know, you know, like you learn your ABCs and you learn. It's not like that. 
It's inspired by the Spirit of God who is, who is the one who you got born again because you were baptized into the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he baptized you into the body of Christ. Well, so then I go on and I'm, li- I'm just reading these scriptures. And I'm not really, I'm, I had read them and I was re- thinking of them. And he goes on and he says in 1 Corinthians 14, what is it then? The King James, he says, so what should I do? I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. I will, and I thought, well, I know we, I pray with my understanding. You know what that is. That's the language you understand. I will pray with my understanding. You pray in English because you understand English. When we're in France, they pray in French when they're praying with their understanding because they understand French. If I was to start preaching in French, now I know some, but at that point, I'd probably, it would have been tongues to me because it was not a known language to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, but he said, I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. And like a neon sign, that four-letter word will just lit up to me. And I realized he used the same word to describe both activities. And I thought to myself, well, I know how I pray in English, my understanding. I willingly yield myself and I may start praying about something I know and then I might start praying about it in ways you know I might start talking about something I hadn't planned on praying but I'm yielding to the spirit of God and he gives me inspiration when you pray in other tongues he said I will pray with my spirit in other words it's up to me to yield to God he's not going to make me speak in tongues you understand what I mean he's not going to take your voice and say nah. but what he's going to do is when you yield to him He's going to fill your mouth and you're going to begin to make, you know, to you, they're not words. They're just utterances. They're just sounds, but they are born of the spirit. And it opens up something inside of you that allows a supernatural power to begin to work in your life. That's what the Bible says. I know it's true for me. And I know it's true for you. So we're just going to do just what the Bible said. Well, they began, he says, they began to speak. In the book of Acts, the way it initially happened is the power of God came upon them and they began to speak. Well, that's what's going to happen to you because he said, this is not just for us. It's for you, your children, to all who are afar off. Isn't that what the Bible says? That is. I know you may not know, but it is. That's what he says. So it's yours. It's a free gift from God. You just have to receive. And so what I'm going to do is we're all going to say this prayer together. And when we get through saying this prayer, we're just all going to yield willingly. You say, how do you do that? You just open your heart to God and you yield and you say, but I don't know what to say. You won't know. It's not coming from what you know, but it'll begin to just bubble up out of you. And you just can't and there you go. Took the cork off the bottle, brother. So everybody here. Anybody else? All right. Let's close our eyes. When we pray, I want the whole church to pray. Everybody say this prayer. Everybody. Because I'm I'm telling you. And I'll lay my hands on you. And the power of God will come on you. Begin to speak. And that's it. Everybody say it with me. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For loving me. For loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for dying for my sin. Rising from the dead. Rising from the dead. So I could have new life. So I could have new life. Jesus. Jesus. Just like you said in the Bible. Just just like like you you said in the Bible. Right now. Right now. I receive. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And I will. And I will. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. In other tongues. In other tongues. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. I don't want you to say anything else in English because you can only talk in one language at a time but everybody I'm gonna lay my hands on you when I do what I start when I start praying in tongues you just start praying with me okay? you ready I'm 
I want some men in the church to come and pray with this man right here. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, let some of your men get down here. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get down in front. Get down in front. Come here. Somebody come around front. Put your hand right on his stomach. There goes the glory of God right there. There goes the glory of God. There goes the glory of God. Just take it. Just take it. eternal damnation it's Christ Christ alone is the only place to, to God only Christ it's never changed that's the truth today that was the truth hundred years ago that was the truth a thousand years ago you said everything's changing in this world no I know some things that aren't changing only through Christ alone can you come to the Father and have eternal life that never changes there is one mediator between God and man that never the man, changes Christ Jesus and he declare it your world is waiting for you to declare it. In fact, let's just do it this way. If you're here and you say, I will be a witness of the power and life of God in my generation, just stand up to your feet. Just stand. Hallelujah. That's the anointing of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now thank him for it. Thank him for the truth that made you free. Thank him for the power raised Christ oh, from the dead that's so working you. What have you been set free from? Alcohol. You can, if you could tell it, you know, if you don't want to tell it publicly, I understand. Alcohol. You know you could get free from alcohol. What's that? You know you people could get free from alcohol. Oh, absolutely. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Tell them. Turn around and tell them. <laughs> I mean, tell them. Yeah. I was an alcoholic for 10 years, and then I came to God instantly. I haven't had a drink in almost five years in September. And Hallelujah. If he did it for me. I'll do it for anybody in here who needs it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody, else, anybody else been set free from something? You need prayer? Yes, 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 yes. Where's my prayer holder? Oh, glory to your... I want to say that I haven't felt the Spirit of the Lord in years. 
I'm born and raised in the church. You got tears in your eyes. And it's, it's nothing but God right there, because I don't cry for nobody. Okay? I've lived a hard life, a blessed life, but hard. I, I count my blessings every day, but I haven't felt the power of God in years. And it's like, like when I felt it when I was a kid. It's, this is new to me again. And I've gone through so much stuff in the past eight years of my life. But I'm strong. I'm still here. You heard the message, didn't you? Yeah, and the message touched my soul. <laughs> and I, I just need prayer for, I need, I hold a lot of things in. And I don't even know how to give it to God anymore. And I, I just need deliverance from my head to the toe. I don't want to get into details, but, but I, my mother, she actually strong armed me to come here tonight. <laughs> and out of respect for my mother. No, don't get me wrong. I, I love this church. You know what I'm saying? I love that she goes to this church. Thank you, Pastor. You're not the first person to give that story. No, I'm serious. I mean, Believe me. The church she went to before, I didn't even want to go there. But I respect that man right there. And it's, and it's an organization. But I'm just, my fellowship with the, the church, that's been deaded. You know that scripture? Uh, uh, they say, uh, how's it go? Uh, I work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And I stand by that at this moment in time. Just me, and my mother, you know, my family. That's that's my church. I got. I mean, yes. I mean, I mean, God. God has always. I've been prophesied to in life. And I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. And and I want change. I want healing. You're serious. Yeah. Yes. That's all. You're so fed up. That's all. When you're so fed up, that's when it happens. Because nobody can do it for you but you. But good news, you need to stay with a pastor and a good church and church members that will help walk you through. You run to us. Well, that's all changing. That's all changed. You have that's to make a decision. Changing. No one can change that. And I want to tell you, you, what you said yes to that caused you for, to forget about that move of God on the inside of you, whatever it was, you start saying no to it. Yeah, he you never, never forgot. forgot. Well, I'm telling you. You don't forget, do you, church? See, that's what happens. That <laughs> broken up road, you want to know how you make a highway of righteousness over it? You start calling on Jesus where you forgot about him. Because I'm here to tell you, the hand of God is on you. You are not the only one who's coming back in this hour. You are one of an army of men and women yes, who army. have the testimony. I was lost, all over the I world. found. I was blind. But, but I, I see. see. That's all you got to tell. They're coming back. what you know. That's They're it. They're coming back. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch forth your hand and pray. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Come here, all the young and young guys who love the Lord. Quick, 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 quick. Move. Oh, come on, come on. Come on. You know who you are if you're young.
What happened last night? I was healed last night. Well, your hands were what? Healed. What happened? Well, I meant, what were they wrong with them? They were tingling and, and numb. Okay, well, you said what now? Just one little hand right there, just a little bit. A little bit. Well, we don't want that. We don't want that. Are there, hey, we don't want that. Where's, come here, you. I keep forgetting your name. Which hand is it? Your hand's on the top of his hand. It's the fire of God. The fire of God. Y'all say the fire of God. Come on. Fire yes. Yes. I mean, come on. Somebody say the fire. Don't you worry about a thing. God's got it all planned out. You just pray and listen to Him. It'll be well with you and everybody you're concerned with. It'll be well, I promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brian, come here. Oh, where is he? Brian, come here. Where are you? Oh, Come here, Brian. You stand next to her or behind her, wherever you are. Where if you think you need to be behind her, stand behind her. So, ushers, get ready. This might be different. So, you know, and you can tell, the Spirit of God is moving and all is well. Oh, but it's more than just what you think or you know. Oh, it is a work that causes great manifestation and many, many others to know. So lift your voice and lift it strong. For the Spirit of God will cause things to be changed unusually in ways that it's not normally done. But you're well prepared and you know He is well able to help you to do stand. So trust Him and be encouraged for all is going to happen just just as God had planned. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Glory to your name. Yeah. Wow is right. Wow. She's running. You can't have that color look. Oh. <laughs> you know the spirit of the living God. You woman of prayer. Yes, you will be fed. Because you are so hungry. It's just all pasión corta a la cinta. It hermoso. Last night I talked about a black woman preacher in Houston, Texas. She had someone in her church called Seymour. William Seymour. The guy who helped was used in the Azusa Street. He heard her speak in tongues. He spoke in tongues and then she introduced him to William Parham. Charles Parham. Charles Parham. Ha uh -huh. You can do anything. And you are. Your work is in the spirit and you know it. You know your work's in the spirit. Oh, I love to work in the spirit. Someone called me and said, how are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing today? And I said, well, I've been all around the world. Whew. I've been in this nation and I've been in that nation. All over my bedroom. I've been in that nation and this nation all in my bedroom. <laughs> Your prayers avail much. hearts right before the Lord. And you have such a love for all people. You could care less. Just like me, I don't care if they're purple with yellow horns. 
it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> strength. Strength and wholeness to finish what God's called you to do. I speak that over you in Jesus' name. Take it. It belongs to you. It'll save your life. Tell it, lady. Tell it. Preach it. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, Corazotai perfects those things that concern you. You know what that word perfect means, don't you? It means he completes. So keep asking. Because Janie, I kept trying to think, you know, last night, and last night, you know, and today I was trying to think, what, what was said over you last night over and over and over? Does anybody remember? Something about... Oh, it is well. Oh, that, it is well. That was going to be her theme, right? It is well. Remember what Lois said last night? She kept saying, these meetings are for now, but they're for your future. Oh, my, um, gamba, the break, oh, breakthrough of today is all about the breakthrough of tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna, oh, where's Pastor? Right there. He's just, he's, just, he's just running around the room yelling, hallelujah. <laughs> this, this, this will concern you too, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like Last night I was supposed to give a tongue, and I really missed it. Those, some of those things, you know, I told you I said I hadn't, didn't get some places. Uh, but a lot was said during the word. I want you to get the word that was spoken over you. It is well. It is well. Boy, that was Holy Ghost, wasn't it? But I felt like I was supposed to have, I felt like I had a tongue, and I didn't obey. You know, that really bothers you, doesn't it? When you, oh, because you don't know what, yeah, what you left out. Elangambango urasi te se. Wow. Elamono suna se de mande. Elanda ba ara se de mono. And I go that way or that way. Elamba angio u no mane na mesi. Elabaso bara sumanana. Ah, no, 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 bara sade. It is well. Kel no mos. Kel monas. Ila. So I see an open door, a door that's been opened by the Holy Ghost. I see a, a vision and a dream from God. Come over here and do this, just like there was with Paul and the apostle that day in going to Macedonia. But I see a strategic well laid out plan of the uh, of the Holy Ghost to be accomplished through the willingness and obedience as you walk it oh not not over there not over there but a door a fresh door that has opened and caught cannot be closed so move in faith one step at a time and the supernatural will take care of what you don't understand and you cannot uh, 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 you cannot handle and you cannot uh, do but the power of God God is able to bring to pass that which he has said to you. So walk in faith and don't be uh, alarmed by things that seem to be out of place. For God can cause crooked place, crooked paths to be straightened out. Mountains to be brought low. Valleys to be filled. And there's a clear path for the glory of God to fall. And it is, he is, he is falling and he is, he is working. Oh, and so that which you know and that has held you steady in the past it's all about what you're walking into for it will work then it will work now and it will last so trust him and obey for it is a good day hallelujah 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 oh I know My future life is worth the living just because you live. I want the ladies in the church to get up here right now. The ladies in this church, get up here. Or if you're a friend of hers and you love her, come on. 
gather around her, put your arms around her, yes, lay hands on her, yes, all, everybody, you're a friend of hers, you're not a member of the church, but you love her and you're a friend, yes, that's it, yes, that's it, come around, come around, come around, come around, come around. Right, yes, so you can give, yes, hallelujah, 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 all the men, I want you to come gather around this guy here, this man of God that has been fighting and fighting and fighting the good fight of faith something's changing something's changing everybody down here that wants to be praise the Lord praise the Lord anointing that's equipping your pastors is equipping you too the anointing flows from the head down if you just receive I'm telling you you're empowered oh to do and to be walk through some places and do if you'll hook up with what God's doing through through the church he'll do it through you individually yes oh glory glory Thank you, Lord. Oh, Master Lombron Castele, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for straightening things out. Oh, some of the things in each person's life here and in this church. Thank you for straightening some things out. That's necessary. And we thank you for doing it. Oh, Lord, you call. Your call is strong this hour, this day. Oh, we hear the Savior calling. We'll go with you. We'll go with you all the way. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Glory, glory. I don't think this is the end of a meeting. I think this is the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we humble ourselves before you, O oh God. We're willing and obedient. Thank you. Thank you for that shift. Thank you for that change. 
In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we, we need to switch gears a little bit right here. Um, we want to receive a love offering for Shekinah Glory. Uh, hallelujah. have an envelope off the back of the chair. If you need to give with a credit card or, or debit card, um, my son-in-law, Cap, he'll be he'll be somewhere out there. Yeah, uh, you can you can. This is the everything. This 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 is the. Um, <laughs> it's the <laughs> oh my. <laughs> It's a, um, it's a special offering. There you go. <laughs> uh, for, for, for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, uh, you can, um, you can make, make your checks. <laughs> oh, just make them out really big. Uh, um, that's, that's not what I was trying to say. Um, <laughs> Take your checks out to FBC. <laughs> that, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, um, there you go. Um, I got drunk. <laughs> if you don't learn to drink from the Holy Ghost, you're going to my turn to drink in the world because you cannot deal with this world sober. <laughs> um, I know that's right. I know. I know. I, know, um, um, I, I got this. Okay. <laughs> make your checks out to the church, but make it out really big for them. Yeah, see, I, got, I told you I got it. If you need to give it a credit card, see him. If you got uh, square cash and you want to send it to the that way, send it that way. Um, you can ask him what our phone number is. You can send it. All right. And um, you're blessed. You're so blessed. Yeah. I, I'm 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 sobering up now. Um, well, I, so I can talk. God knows where. You live. He knows what you're going through. And he knows how to speak. The word of faith is taught, but the spirit of faith is caught. In those moments when God speaks. Hallelujah. There is a spirit of faith in here tonight. Not just the word. The spirit. I caught it. <laughs> That's all right. 
That's right. You know, when you pack up to drive to Tulsa, you got to have a tank of gas, get a few more along the way. Yeah. But you don't leave on empty. No, you don't. It's 1,083 miles. <laughs> Depending on which way, if you stay, if you, if you go a little bit too far on an exit, it's 1,090. But you leave town with a full tank. And if Nathan's widget with chicken salad in the cooler. <laughs> and if you're, if you're journeying with God, you got to go with a full tank. And you're going to get filled up along the way some more. But you got to have a full tank. Yeah, that was good. Are you recording this? I can watch it later. I was receiving the offer, wasn't I? Oh, yeah, that. All right, so, everybody got your money ready? We want big offerings. Now, see, since it's not coming to us, and it's not even coming to the church, but it's going to them, I can say I want a big offering. Because he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man as he purposes in his own heart. Not begrudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, a cheerful giver. How many ready to be cheerful tonight? He didn't say tearful or fearful. He said cheerful. Y'all ready to do cheerful? Now how many know how to do cheerful? I've seen people get fearful. Oh, Jesus, that's my last meal in Testament right there. I seen him give tearfully. Lord, I don't have anything else. But I know that cheerful is a sign that you got the spirit of faith on it. Amen. Father, we bless. By the unction of the Holy Ghost, everybody that gives in this offering right now, we bless them with the word of God. Hallelujah. That says we will reap what we sow. That says that you will open up heaven's windows and empty out blessings on us. We don't have room enough to receive. And Father, you even said that you would give unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men are given to your bosom. We decree it. We declare it. We call it done. In Jesus' name. While you're re receiving that offering, I'm going to give away a few things here. There's a teaching, several teaching CDs back there. Well, actually, I'll give you it's this one. Uh, I, I kind of taught a little. I did teach on this tonight, but there's stuff on here I didn't teach. This one's called Satan Hindered, But He Could Not Stop the Will of God. And I'm going to give it to someone who acts like they'd like to have it right now. I'm going to give it to the lady in the pink right there. Now, this one is for, this one's called... Mercy for your failure and faith for your future. Hallelujah. <laughs> that lady right there with the blue scarf around her, you're pointing to her? you pointing to her? Give that to her. All right, there you go. Praise the Lord. Oh, let me see what else I got here. I got one. Oh, my that last goodness. one she gave away is real good for healing, too. Okay, now good. listen. If you don't think it matters, you know, the uh, devil... He hates when Christians come together. It is his policy to keep us apart. And I'm telling you, anything that makes him dad mad, I delight in. Oh, yeah, I love that. You hear me? Anything that just irritates him, I'm signing up for that. Well, I know one thing he does not like. He does not like Christians who are a part of a good local church. He doesn't care if you stay home. In fact, you know what he likes is for you to be home thinking you don't need anybody else. But the fact is you will never do the will of God by yourself. Never. Because you are a part of the body of Christ. He made you. The number one term to describe you in the Bible is a member. Membership is God's idea, 
member of the body. Thank you for that rousing amen, but that's true. I'm leaving on Saturday, so I'll come back. This one's called The Strength of God's Plan Today. And I'm going to give it to somebody who can't live without it. <laughs> Praise the Lord right there. I want to give it to the lady right there. Praise the Lord. Okay. So there's lots of other things back there. And, uh, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff. ShekinahGlory.com, that's us. And we're in the process of getting some things on there. Uh, teachings and, and audio or videos that are free. You'll be able to watch uh, different ones on different times. And, and so just, uh, you know, hook up with that. And just don't, don't let yourself... Don't let yourself be a discouraged, you know, the, the Christians who are the most uh, just, you know, miserable are the ones that hear something from God and do nothing. Well, I'm telling you, those are the worst people you don't want to be around. You, I'd rather be around a sinner than somebody who knows something God says and does nothing with it. I'm telling you the truth. That's the Bible right. says you're blessed not because you hear, but because you do something with what you hear so i challenge you yep. tomorrow morning get up and whatever it is that made you forget about god turn it off don't listen to it and put something on because god doesn't work in a vacuum put something on that makes you aware of god everything in this world is designed to make you forget about god but everything in the church is to mo designed to help you remember him. Because there ain't nothing casual about a Holy Ghost Christian saint. You don't have any. Okay, we're going to. Now, Cindy's just kind of going to have a little fun here. Everybody ain't say, nothing casual about a Holy Ghost Christian saint. No, no. Woo. <laughs> ain't nothing casual about a Holy Ghost Christian saint. So I know some of y'all need to go to church or, I mean, go to school or work tomorrow. Go so to I'm going to let you. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. And everybody just, say this with me one time. And then we just, nothing casual about a Holy Ghost Christian saint. And you okay, can be ready? dismissed. We love you. Time. Let's go. Hey, are oh, you ready? One, two, well, three, four. Ain't nothing casual about a Holy Ghost Christian saint. Look at somebody and tell them. I'm no, not. no.
this hot stuff. I'll tell you later. Go. He never gives you about a holy ghost musician. that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving. <laughs>